Hi, in this video we'll be looking at factors and specifically we'll be looking at prime factorization. And if that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry, in a couple minutes it will. So let's talk about what a factor is. I'm going to use an example to actually discuss that. Alright, so in this example I want us to find or maybe just list the factors of 30. List the factors of 30. So the factors of 30 are numbers that when you, you multiply it by another number, you'll get 30. And we're interested in whole numbers. So whole numbers, when multiplied by another whole number, gives you 30. All right, so for example, we know that when you have 1 and you multiply it by 30, you get 30. So those are factors of 30. We also have 2 and 15, because when you multiply 2 by 15, you get 30. There is 3 and 10, because when you multiply 3 by 10, you get 30. And then we have 5 and 6, because when you multiply 5 by 6, you get 30. So those are all the numbers, all the whole numbers, that when you multiply them by another whole number, you get 30. So that's a full list of factors. Um, we're going to specifically talk about prime factors. Um, and in order to figure to, to talk about prime factors, you have to know what a prime number is. So let's move on to that. Okay, so a prime number is a number that has exactly two factors, one and itself. So for example, two is a prime number because the factors of two are just one and two and no more. Um, three is also a prime number because of the factors of three, one and three, and no more. We have five because the factors are five and one, no more. Seven, eleven, these are all prime numbers. And so when we're looking at prime factorization in a couple minutes, we have to keep those numbers in mind. Of course, there's more as you go up, 13, and so forth. All right. Um, a composite number, which I'm not even going to write examples for because we're not really using it, a composite number has more than two factors, just in case you were curious. All right, now let's look at what it means to find the prime factors of a number. Okay, so this looks like a pretty daunting task. We're asked to write the prime factorization of 630. So in order to do that, there are multiple ways, but I am a huge fan of the factor tree, so that's what I'm going to do with you guys. All right, so we have the number 630, and what you have to do is try to think of the smallest possible prime number that goes into 630, and that in itself is not hard to do. It's actually the smallest prime number in general, which is 2. So 2, when multiplied by 315 gives you 630. So I just divided 630 by 2 to get 315. Now I go ahead and I ask myself the question again, but this time with the 315 in mind. And the question is, what's the smallest possible prime number that goes into 315? And the answer to that is 3. 2 doesn't go into it, but 3 does. All right, and so we divide 315 by 3, and we get 105. And we go ahead, we keep going with the tree. What's the smallest possible prime number that goes in 105? Still 3. Divide 105 by 3, and we get 35. All right, and again, of course, you're guessing this now. We look for the smallest possible prime number that goes into 35, but 3 no longer is going to work. 5 will. That's the next smallest one. And it works with 7. And then 7 itself is a prime number, so we've actually found all of the prime factors of 630. And so you can get 630 if we take this, 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 and this, and multiply them by each other. So let's circle them so we remember where these numbers are coming from. So the prime factorization of 630 is 2 times 3 times 3, times 5, times 7. And since we're multiplying 3 by itself, we can replace that with 3 squared. So 2 times 3 squared, times 5, times 7. And that's how we do prime factorization.